Hi there, I'm Dr. Rich Simmons, and we're standing here on the top of the Carbon Neutral Energy Solutions Lab at Georgia Tech. In terms of the global picture, still nearly 80% of the world's energy is coming from a fossil fuel resource. That number has changed a bit in recent years with the advent of new additions of solar and wind, as well as geothermal and bioenergy resources, among some others. Whereas in the last decade or so, wind has grown by a factor of 10 times in the United States markets. And if you look back toward the early 2000s, solar has climbed actually at 100 times of those initial rates. And here we have a little microcosm of the two ends of the energy spectrum. Coal cars on one hand and solar modules on the other. A totally perfect paradigm for how we would like to envision a renewable future, but understanding and building on the fossil fuel resources that have powered our economy and made it productive. And now a matter of balancing these in the future, working toward lower carbon, and understanding how we leverage all of the above is really our challenge. From the very moment we wake up, we turn off our alarm clock, right? We turn on the lights. We unplug or maybe we check our cell phone. Um, then we probably go downstairs. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll brew some coffee while we're talking here. Electricity isn't like a lot of the other things that we use, like food, water, money, toilet paper. Uh, given enough space in the right conditions, we can store a lot of those commodities, for example, on shelves. Uh, in barrels or in banks. Um, electricity actually needs to be matched, as we said. And what makes this even trickier is that our demand fluctuates. What is driving this trend toward electric vehicles? And by the way, I prefer my puns intended. What's driving this trend is a push toward lower emissions, right? And a cleaner economy. So given that we need energy security, we need sustainability and affordability, we can go one layer deeper and think about the elements that make up a really effective energy policy strategy, which address things that the public cares about, like energy efficiency, uh, reduced dependence on oil, whether that's foreign or in general, uh, a diversity of resources, meaning we're not relying on any one thing too much. Um, and then, of course, clean energy. These are the hot topics that the public has strong views about and that integrate themselves in the dis discourse of implementing energy policy. Could you talk about um, what that means for our state in terms of lower carbon emitting base load, but also for um, kind of a signal to the country about the role of nuclear? Certainly, we've had two different nuclear power plant sites in Georgia for quite a while. And Plant Vogel, the one that's in the news the most, we initially constructed units one and two in 1987 and 1989. And these plants really have served the state flawlessly. Uh, no accidents. Uh, they've been just a fantastic carbon-free uh, baseload resource. Well, now welcome inside the museum at the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank. This is a unit of the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank, whose role is to oversee U.S. monetary policy, which is an important uh, contribution to the overall economic sector in the U.S. And so now the purpose of this discussion is to talk about the linkages between energy and the economy. Obviously in the U.S. we have seen a tremendous growth in economic output over many decades. That has been very closely linked to our ability to extract useful work from electricity and other energy resources. So now energy diversity is our next hot topic. And what do we mean by that? Well, a diversity of resources just means that we're not reliant on a single resource to do everything. And so we have two very different realities in the United States when we look at electric power compared to transportation services. 